The games we're making today use a number track. This is a number track. It's different to a number line. Number lines are where the numbers occupy a division between cells, like numbers on a ruler. A number track is where the numbers occupy the whole cell, like this. They're much better to play games on. So you can download my number track from Freestyle Maths, or even better, you can make your own. So I'm going to make my own using two pens, a ruler, some masking tape and a big sheet of paper. So I've lined the pens up, taken the lids off the pens, lined them up on each side of the ruler. Then I'm wrapping a bit of masking tape around to hold them. I've done this two times just to make sure they're held tight. So here's the fun part. I'm going to use my double pen drawer to draw some parallel lines. So these lines will never meet each other. They will always be the same distance apart because of the ruler. I'm drawing a kind of a, like a bendy S shape. So up to the top, curving round, back down, turning it carefully. You need a great big sheet of paper for this or perhaps the side of a cardboard box, that would do. Some wallpaper, that would do. Now, here's the clever bit. When I draw across my two parallel lines like this, I can now make some perfect, well, almost perfect squares. Just by estimating the distance. Can you see my number track appearing? There you are, I like it. Now I just have to put a number in each square, starting with one. Let's see how far I go. I've gone past 20. How far do you think I'll get to? Guess a number. Mine went all the way to 38. It doesn't really matter how far you get. I just want to make a nice long number track so I can play lots of different types of games on it. I'm going to teach you two or three games and then it's down to you to make up your own. Okay, so we're going to play a very simple racetrack game and to play this I'm not going to use a dice, I'm going to use a spinner and I've made a spinner that goes from one to four and I'm using dots instead of numerals because actually that's easier to associate dots with the number of jumps on a number track. The dots even look like jumps or footsteps, so that helps children. So we're playing to 10 because to play to 38 takes too long, so I'll put a glass pebble on number 10. So it's the first player that lands on the 10 or goes past the 10 is the winner. Very simple. So you have a simple spinner, use a paper clip in the middle or I've made a little cardboard pointer, push a pen through it, spin it, flick it round, if it lands on one, play up, the first player moves one. So I jump forward, one. So that's a simple racetrack game. Let's try something a bit more complex. For this game, you need some treasure. I'm using my glass beads, but you could use anything. It could be some breakfast cereal, like Cheerios, that you could munch if you win. It could be coins, it could be paper clips, it could be anything. So put your treasure on any square. What I like about the glass pebbles is you can see the numerals through the glass. Now each player puts their playing piece on any empty square. We're not starting from zero or the beginning this time, anywhere you like. And we're going to roll a dice or spin a spinner and whatever you roll or land on, that's how many you move in either direction. So you can go forwards or backwards. Okay, let's have a go. So I get a six. So I move my piece forwards or backwards, six. 
so I can't go backwards, so I'm going to go forwards. Will I get on some treasure? One, two, three, four, five, six. No treasure for me. Keep taking turns, playing, moving forwards or backwards to land on treasure. If you land on the treasure, you get the treasure. The winner is the person with the most treasure at the end of the game. This is great for number sense and calculation skills. If I'm on four and I roll a three, for example, four minus three, one, two, three, is one. Four plus three, one, two, three, is seven. That's why I recommend putting numbers into squares on a game like this. We don't need the numbers in the squares, but it does develop children's number sense and their sense of addition and subtraction when they're moving forwards and backwards along a number track. Once you've developed your number track, you can then adapt it and make up lots of different games with different rules. For example, landing on certain numbers means that you miss a turn, or highlighting certain numbers, like I've highlighted the multiples of five orange, Every time you land on a multiple of five, not only does it teach you the five times table, but you could make up certain rules that happen when you land on a multiple of five or three or seven or eight. There's a snakes and ladders idea here with the arrows. If I land on a six, it means I zoom forwards and land on 20. If I land on 18, it means I zoom back and land on 10. Make up your own rules and ideas. Let's get creative with board games. Excellent. Don't forget, start simple and then get creative afterwards. Have fun making your own board games. For more ideas, why not find us on Freestyle Maths on Facebook? See you soon.